Welcome to the Separation Anxiety and Dogs Decoded podcast. I am your host, Ness Jones, and we'll be deep diving into all things separation anxiety. But before we get started, please make sure you like this episode, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications so you never miss another one. And don't forget, if you are interested in joining my easy step-by-step training program to resolve separation anxiety in your dog, you'll find the link in the show notes. Now let's get started. Hello. So today I want to talk about some of the things that dogs do to express their discomfort when we walk out the door. And I polled my Facebook group, which is called Separation Anxiety in Dogs Decoded, to find out what the most common ones were and maybe some of the lesser known ones as well. And of course, dogs are all individuals, so they are all going to express themselves differently. But For me, I would say the most common one is barking, howling, crying, whining, and I was correct according to my Facebook group, and please feel free to join. Uh, You'll find it, obviously, it's quite easy, facebook.com forward slash groups with an S forward slash separation anxiety in dogs decoded. Come and join our little community. Um, but yes, barking, howling, crying, and whining are the common, most common ones that dogs do to show us that they're not feeling very happy about our departure. Um, next was, according to this group at least, um, came in at 12% pacing. So for me, pacing isn't just the fact that they might be lying down and they get up and they dawdle to the door or the window. It's more frantic. It's very fast and there's hypervigilance and very much alert. And there's probably going to be some whale eye and some other things, maybe some drool going on with that as well. Uh, what else? Um, becoming anxious before they leave. So obviously, again, that hypervigilance. So dogs dogs recognize what we do when we're walking out the door. They understand that we often have a pattern to tell them that they're going or we do certain things. So it depends. It could be putting on something like a uniform or certain shoes that they know whenever you put those shoes on that they're not coming with you. Uh, It could be putting on makeup. It could be blow drying your hair, brushing your teeth, getting lunch out of the fridge. There's all sorts of things, things we're not even aware that we do. No doubt that dogs definitely are because they are always watching us. Uh, many dogs will stare at the door or the window until they you, you return. So I don't mind if a dog hangs out by the window or the door and goes into what we might call wait mode. Uh, but if they're just literally sitting there for hours on end staring, that's something different and that definitely can denote that there is some underlying anxiety going on there as well. Um, toileting other, um, despite being otherwise house trained. Yes. For me, dogs that do that, it's pretty severe because dogs don't want a toilet where they have it, habitate, habitat, habitat, where they live. (laughs) Um, and so, you know, if they, if they would normally go outside and yet when you walk out the door that they, um, they toilet, then that's, that's a very big sign that they're not able to cope. And I would call that the severe category. Uh, trying to escape so lots of dogs try to escape either you might find damage around exit points so windows and doors Um, some dogs will dig in the carpet by the front door Uh, other dogs will chew the window sills you know the timber around the door frames or the sills Uh, dogs have been known to jump out of two-story windows that's not that's like pretty pretty bad obviously um but often it ends up in self-harm or because they're so frantic their thinking brain is gone and they just want to get to you and um they don't think about themselves the uh, dogs in general seem to be quite oblivious to their own um self-harm i know my dogs are, can be like that sometimes when they're having too much fun but in this case it's because their thinking brain has gone i had kevin the staffy client and he climbed up on a shed roof um cut his face up pretty bad and jumped over the shed roof out, out of the yard and went up the road could have got run over luckily he didn't uh, but yeah so trying to escape um can be one of those things and you know trying causing damage around those exit points if they can't get out 
um, destroying things. So this is, uh, 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 it says 6% in this group. So maybe not as common as some people would think, but certainly um, a friend of mine had her Italian leather boots um, destroyed. <laughs> she still talks about it to this day. The dog has passed. It's a long time ago. Um, but obviously those were very much cherished Italian leather boots and her dog destroyed them. Uh, so destroying things could be a couch, could be electronic devices, could be anything, could be toys. So what we do have to look at and drill down into then is, is it based in anxiety, fear, stress that they have been left alone? Or is it maybe a young dog, um, teenager perhaps that's got lots of energy and doesn't know what to do with it, might be a little bit bored, haven't had their exercise or their enrichment, haven't had their needs met, and so they are acting out. Uh, I was actually doing an interview earlier for um, a summit that's coming up, a dog anxiety summit, so I'll let you guys know all about that when it comes up. When it's happening, it's happening in August, but um, I could hear my my dog, who's not a teenager, by the way, but it was an early morning interview um, and the dogs hadn't been out and I could hear her doing naughty things. And I could, there was nothing I could do about it because uh, I was obviously being interviewed uh, and I was chatting online and I, I knew she was doing something naughty. And um, that was based in boredom, though, not in because um, she hadn't been out. She's a you know high energy working dog and she hadn't had her needs met so she made her own fun so we do need to if we're seeing the dogs destroying things just be mindful that it you know are we meeting their needs oh and of course Maya my dog Maya she literally put holes in the walls when um we left like literally put great big holes in the and the plasterboard uh yeah so that's what is it based on? Is it anxiety or is it frustration or is it boredom? Is it a young dog? Is it Has the dog got too much energy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another one is intense drool. So, and I have seen this for myself uh, on, a, on a video, so much drool, just unimaginable drool from this tiny little dash hound and the, the dog guardians wiping it up and it's, puddled it's unbelievable so um that's yeah and I, I had another client billy the labradoodle and she her his mum used to would say that um she used to come home and it was like the dog had gone for a swim there was that it had drooled so much so high stress with that um what else have we got here uh jump incessantly and anxiously dig uh, yeah, okay, destroys paper. So again, with the destroying paper, is it because they're young and dumb? <laughs> not young and dumb, but you know what I mean, young and not getting their needs met, too much energy, don't know what to do with it, or is it based in anxiety? And, you know, if it's just paper and it's not based in anxiety and it's more based in frustration, there's a lot of things we can put in place um, and also be thankful it's paper and not your couch. <laughs> um, some dogs like electronic devices as well, so um, hide your remotes. Um, what else? Door dashing. So the, pouring at the door and door dashing. These are the last two that are on this list, I believe. Yeah, so they're kind of hand in hand. Um, door dashing, um, obviously because they want to come with you, uh, and or they've got an expectation that they're coming with you so they don't necessarily recognize that they're going to be left they just think they're coming with you because you generally take them with you um, and pouring at the door yes that's another one so um, especially if they've been taught so some dogs um, the guardians will teach them to pour at the door to say I want to go out um, but yes, pouring at the door can be, hey, hey, you forgot me, let me out as well. Another one that um, I spoke to somebody just recently was that their dog would literally attack them. <laughs> and I've actually seen this too. So I, I did an assessment once with this dog and uh, I was it was online, um, and but I was getting them to do some steps to see so I could have an idea of what the dog's threshold was and what... It looked like when he walked out the door, was the dog nice and calm or was it reacting? As soon as he stood up and took a few steps to the door, the dog was grabbing hold of his shorts and 
trying to hold him back and stop him. Um, he got past that. It was all good in the end. Um, he actually went through that training program very quickly, that dog, um, Benny, his name was. Um, but, yes, it was the funniest threshold assessment I've ever done, to be honest, because it was uh, he was just, I don't know, the best way I can think of it. He was off his face. He was literally trying to stop his dad from walking out the door. Um, but I think it was based more on frustration than anxiety. Um, but, yes, so there's a lot of different things that dogs will do. Some will refuse food, obviously, if they're really stressed. When, when, when we're um, stressed, our stomach goes into a knot and our digestive system starts, shuts down. Food is usually the last thing that we're thinking about. So anyway, there's some of the things to look out for. Obviously, we don't want any of these things and we want to um, stop them before they occur. So even if your dog becomes anxious before you leave, there's things that we can do to put in place to, um, to remedy that and to help the situation. So keep listening to these podcast episodes. Hopefully you'll be able to drill down into how to help your dog overcome this issue. You have been listening to Ness Jones on the Separation Anxiety in Dogs Decoded podcast. Don't forget to check out the show notes to learn more about my programs and how I can help you with tailored training. Until next time.